Evening folks, how you all doing? Let's see who are the early lurkers today. Well, I know some of the people are missing from this list, but anyway, hello to Darius, Decaf, Smurf, Infinisil, Barrod, and I can see from the chat that Pomdapimp is here too. Twitch is lying to me. Um, yeah, we're back again. Let's, uh, let's play with a few of those pixels. Um, last week we left off screwing around with um, uh, the Asimp uh, image, uh, what was it? Model importer, sorry. And um, we got part way there, um, but then we started having issues. And that just froze for a second, which was kind of interesting. I don't know what that was. Um, so we were able to uh, load a basic model, um, but it was untextured and a bit funky. And uh, oh no, that was the reason we didn't have textures, was because the um, image loading was failing. And we tried to do a little bit of stuff because, I mean, that is a problem I've run into before. Um, so we converted all the JPEGs to PNGs and we still ran into troubles. Uh, so what I actually did, we weren't actually that far off. I, I, I did a few things to get stuff to load. So I kept our PNGs, but I uh, lowercased all the names. And in the material file, I updated all the names to be lowercase as well. Because I'm pretty sure there were some mismatches in there with, of, um, of case, which won't matter probably if you're on Windows, uh, but matters to everyone else. Um, so yeah, that got fixed up. And I also made a slight change in our assets setup, which we're already here, in the get text uh, function. We now check if the path is absolute. And if it is, we just use it as it is. And if it's not, we're going to assume... Uh, so wait a second, where are we? If it's absolute, we just use the path. And otherwise, we're going to assume it's relative to our project and that's it. And that with that, I was able to load the model. And so if we just do our, where's our little function? We have this test2 function here that tries to load the sponsor uh, scene. So let's do that, test2. Give it a second, it churns and churns, and then we get our model again. But it still looks like garbage, even though all the texture's loaded. And we can check that, or at least we can check some of them quite easily. So let's, um, let's do that quickly, just to satisfy ourselves. And let's just have a quick look what's happening in chat. Hey, hey, hello, everyone. Um, Pond Pimp saying no sound there. And then suddenly AMV, okay. Glad it fixed itself. That's really cool. Um, seeing some lag on your side, Pond Pimp. Okie dokie. I'm seeing a good 3.5k upload. Uh, sorry, no, you know. Yeah, it, it, it's it's solid stream right now. So I don't think we're having any problems. 3.5 thousand kilobits a second. Um, where are we? Do, 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 do. Even the title of the stream is okay. Yes, I'm almost organized. Median, hello, good to see you. Um, so yes, these are all the, um, whoa, crap, I'm on the wrong machine. I've just opened a load of web browsers. No, no, back over here. Um, this is our list of things that we're rendering. Um, and this is our asset thing. So let's just take one of these samplers over to the REPL. Um, and just do a def var temp one is that. So let's check temp one. Yep. And then we're going to go to play with verts. And we're just going to go to where we're rendering stuff. Oh, actually, I've already got some code here. We're going to just draw that texture. And we can see that it's one of the textures um, from our folder. So we, we're successfully loading the textures now, which is great. Um, but they're not applied to the model. And I'm pretty sure I know why that is. Well, there's definitely one reason um, that I can guarantee. And that's if we go to render and have a look, uh, we can see that our vertex stage is expecting a struct uh, g-pnt, which if we jump to its definition, we can see that it's a um, vector three position, vector three normal, and vector two texture coordinates. Um, but we're not passing it that. We're passing it a very different stream. If we go back to assets again, uh, we can see that our type is this asset mesh which isn't entirely differently laid out, but it is slightly. So we have a vector three position, a vector three normal, a vector two um, for the UVs. So that's not going to do at all. Um, so we need to, well, we need to make a, a version of the pipeline uh, that's gonna support this. Now I was thinking originally that I could just uh, rearrange this because all that really matters is the data layouts the right way around. Um, I'm intrigued to how that's going to work, actually. I'm wondering if we can just put UVs in the third position 
and because it's only packing each vertex into um, this place. I think it, as long as the data layout is, is lines up, this should be all right. Let's just try it. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to um, kill... What was it? I think we have a kill. Nope. Free all. Awesome things. There we go. Bye. Um, so that's done. Corner of say, say, did you improve your shell image magic skills since last week? No! I have had very little uh, free time for... Well, to be fair, I, I, I got a few hours of uh, free time for some Keppel stuff, uh, and I put it all straight on that, because I just, uh, yeah. Time was at a premium. So, we redefine this struct. Um, in fact, I'm just going to recompile this file. So anything that was using this struct has now been updated as well. I don't think we have use, use of it anywhere else. Um, and let's try loading stuff again and just see what happens. Test 2. Holy shit. Well, that has something on it. That doesn't. But this is a slightly different texture than we had before. And this... Is it just jamming the brick texture on there? Oh, maybe it's the wrong one. <laughs> does look a bit strange, actually. What is going on here? Oh, no, I know what this is. We've got the normal garbage from uh, from down here being used on everything. Which is completely wrong. So we need uh, just a dummy texture to be used in those cases. Maybe we should do a separate render. Because <laughs> it would be nice to have normal mapping on at some point. Hmm, what should we do? What shall we do? Um, well, let's go and see how the things are structured. Right, so we have a normal map here. Um, and at the moment... Let's have a look. What are all our SM things using? Their normal slot is empty, which means it's going to, like, because we're using the same pipeline uh, again and again, it's going to use the last thing that was bound to it, which, of course, is the um, normal map we're using down here. So we kind of need to unbind that thing, uh, but doing nil won't do that. Um, let's just make a texture, which is got one thing in it. I think we can do that. Can you have a one-by-one one texture? Probably can. Um, make texture of one. Um... And it's, hmm, yeah, this should work. List zero, zero, minus one, something like that. Um, that's interesting, actually. No, it'll be, um, it'll just be one, I think. I'm just trying to remember how that should be laid out, but I think it's, the Z is following the normal. Yeah, that's probably it. That's probably it. So let's do that. Um, and then dimensions will be one by one, and I don't think we need anything else. Um, of course, mip map can definitely be nil. Let's see what that happens. Dimensions are invalid for initial contents. Oh, okay, yeah, I suppose this is a two-dimensional array, so it's expecting a nested list like that. Okay, that's fine. Um... Yeah, let's take this and go, because I'm going to forget about this very quickly. Um, let's just make a new variable for this. Def of our fullback. Um, it's going to be fullback, normal map um, is nil. And what we actually need to do with this, set a fullback is going to be sample this. Okay. Maybe? Maybe. Um, and we take that texture and we'll do the same thing. So we sample that. Um, and then we're going to set a fallback normal map to that. Okay. And then in the drawing code, um, when we have 
normal map, we can just say or fallback, hopefully. Huh. Well, that was anticlimactic. Oh. Wow, something's well and truly froze up there. Huh. I haven't seen that. Maybe before. Well, SPCL hasn't crashed. And that's still running. Oops. Did I break it a second ago and not notice? Uh, it's quite possible. Yeah, I did. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, Kidogi. Oh yeah, when I started it, of course, it cleared everything. Fine. Fine, fine, fine. Let's do uh, test two. Okay. That looks a little more sensible in that I'm not seeing weird textures on there now. I'm also... Ah, this is actually... This bodes well. I think these blocks are different than these ones. So they are using different textures. Look at that horrible shading there. Dear God, what's going on? Okay. Are the normals really that screwed up? That's really interesting. Anyway. So what's going on over here? A load of cobblers. Got some random chat about video encoding and FFmpeg and stuff. Darius is saying, it's a bit off topic, but one of the streams you said you uh, would not want to write the game you are doing at work in Lisp. Would you mind sharing why you think doing it at Lisp would not be a good idea? Um, because the tooling just isn't there. I've got to work in a team, even though a small team, um, we need to uh, be able to work effectively there. And there's no point in me reinventing uh, a lot of wheels that are already available. And frankly, just the, the tooling right now for Unity is better than what we have. Um, and it, it, a lot of it centers around content pipeline. Like I can take assets and I can get them in immediately. Um, and lots of the messy things are handled. It's doing, it's handling FFmpeg up to date um, and all those kind of things. So I can rely on taking assets from whatever programs are best for my, the artists to use and not have to fight to, or, or can tell them that they have to do it in some weirdy format or some old out of date format. So just so I can get it in. Um, there's a huge ecosystem around it, so I can actually rely on libraries that have already been made, especially around networking and stuff like this. Um, yeah, it's, it's a lot more tested. There's a lot more tooling. There's, uh, yeah, and the Unity editor is very extensible. I mean, it has, it does have plenty of its problems, um, but it's, yeah, it does the job pretty well. And I can't, I couldn't hand on heart, I couldn't even close to say that what we have in Lisp right now compares um and so yeah it would be it would be totally wrong at all also um for what we're doing um i want while the, whilst the game itself is um going to be a desktop game primarily um I, I want to get some of the dm related tools onto mobile phones and things like this with the current setup i can just you know make an android build like take the ui scene and just make an android build of that and i've got it and it runs with all the same networking code and everything's good to go i can't do that with lisp either um so yeah it's uh there's stacks of things that would need to be uh right before i could start using that also um i would like to see better proof um of yeah i, I would be interested to see um i'd, I'd, I'd like to make um like a like, a, is there a serious tech demo or a game in Lisp? Um, just to test at what point GC starts becoming a problem and things like this. Again, for the kind of game that we're doing right now, probably it wouldn't be a massive uh, thing, but still, yeah. Problem with saying Unity developers, along with uh, developing great product, are really cool with the community and listen to people's wishes. Yeah, they, they get there eventually, that's for sure. Um, yeah, there's, there's just a... It's just a mountain of stuff. There's just so many things that are done um, and play well together, which is really cool. Hey, no worries, Darius. That's um, No, it's a great question. And it's one that I kind of, I chew over, obviously, because I, I love doing this. But yeah, 
I know it would be wrong wrong thing for me to use right now. Uh, hey, look. Correctly textured. That's nice. Awesome. So, I don't know what the hell's going on here. We've got a few... Got a few weirdy things. Is this meant to be... Because I know they have drapes and stuff in some of these scenes. I thought they weren't in any of these. What's disturbing me, though, is just, like... Our shading just doesn't look like there's any, um interpolation of the UVs. It's like we're doing flat UV between, um, f f like, passing the VEC2 and then doing, um, what is it, the uh, qualifier. Oh, I can't even remember the name of it now. What's the, I'll have to look that up, actually, because I should know that. Anyway, it's like this guy is being passed flat to the next stage. Um, or the, all the normals are pointing, of every triangle are pointing, in, of every Vertex are pointing in the same direction, which would also be weird. Now, is it related to the stuff that we've been doing with our normal mapping, maybe? Like, if we've... Because we've... Uh, hmm. We do some... We, we did some stuff when we're doing the normal mapping things... What was it? I'm trying to remember now. Oh right, yeah, here we go. So our, like our vertex um, stage, we also pass in this data, which is our um, tangent and bitangent stuff. Yeah, we really need to actually just copy this and make a new pipeline for our um, asymp stuff rather than trying to hack this on. Um, so let's do that. Let's take that out. Let's go back to assets. Let's jump up and look at asset mesh was the type. Cool. Uh, if we compile this, it's going to freak out. There's no method for the GLSL function pos when called with asset mesh. So what we're going to do is we're going to say with slot because or with slots rather which um, in Vario at least um, does work with structs, which it is not required to do in um, common list, but normal standard. Um, let's have a look. Do, 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 do. Um, I'm just gonna bring up that file again. Okay, yeah, post normal UV. Okay, so actually this, um, exactly. Except we're not gonna treat the UVs do this. Pass normal UV. Let's get rid of these. Um, is there anything else funky we did? Um, before I go any further, I'm just trying to remember if we did anything else to do with the tangent by tangent stuff here for the, the normal mapping. Jesus, was that? And, hmm, okay, so we're gonna actually need a new fragment stage as well. Okay, so, let's cancel that. This is our asymp first stage. Oh, what's wrong now? Symbol TB is missing, TB, where is that? Oh, yeah, loads of stuff here. Look at this. What's all this? Um, oh, yeah, tangent by tangent. Those are all transformed, so we don't need those. Okay, that compiled down. So, then let's go and look at... Tangent track stage with norms... Okay, got a good few things to trim out here. So, we haven't got this matrix anymore, so that's going away. We're not going to have a normal map, so that can go away. Um, we are, what else? The frag normal is going to be there. The norm from map, no, we don't need that. We don't need this, we don't need this. 
Norm from map. Okay, so we're not doing that anymore. So that is oh, that's the normal. Okay, TBN norm from map. Huh. That's kind of interesting. Okay. Anyway, I'll remove that. So we've got normal defined up here. Um, is there anything else? It definitely is. I'm just not seeing it yet. Let's compile this anyway. Oh, it didn't fail. Oh, shit. That will have broken a lot of things, though. We want this, and we want to call this asset frag stage. Nice. And then we're going to go make a pipeline with this stuff. So. Asset pipeline. Simp vert stage. And this is now taking. Is it called asset mesh? There we go. And not that. And then we're not taking a, a matrix three. And this is asset. Once we've got all this set up, I'm looking forward to doing some streams where we. Yeah, where we just do things with this scene. We use it as our kind of example scene. Okay, so now we've got a pipeline for that. Um, now we're going to go back to things. We're going to go to draw. And now we're going to specialize this on asset thing. Um, and we are going to change the pipeline to asset pipeline. We don't have a normal map anymore, so we don't need to worry about that. And I don't know. Was there anything else we changed? Let's do that. Well, that looks a little bit better. Oh no, there's still there's still these horrible hard edges here. I can't believe that's in the model. I really need to believe that that was. Ugh. Oh. I'm getting some lag again. That's very disturbing. I'm wondering what that is. Hopefully not GC. Because <laughs> then it's time to look into... Uh... Yeah, then it's time to look into the... Into Keppel again and see what we're doing. Darius says, so to solve the problem, we basically need to get Shimera and borrowed us and lock them away for a year or <laughs> two. Fuck yes. That would make so much handy software. Um, yeah, I mean, it's there's a lot of achievable stuff. Like, if, you're, if you've got a kind of focused thing you want to do, and it's desktop only, and, and yeah, basically if you control that whole flow, like, if you, if you have an asset pipeline set up that works well for you, and all these kind of things, if you... Yeah, if, if you've got all of that, then yeah, you totally could do it. It's it's absolutely achievable. But given time is at such a premium and so many things that need to work ju to just work, like there's enough problems. It's going to be difficult enough to ship this year with everything working um, first time. And so, yeah, it's uh, I need all the help I can get, basically. But yeah, I would love, man, if, if I could just actually just work on this full time, just write lispy rendering stuff, that would be so good. Um, yeah, man, that'd be cool. What's this going on? Um, <laughs> Lego styles. Yeah, totally, man. <sighs> so what is this? Why is that? Now, I thought there was a horrible restriction with um, OBJ, because this is an OBJ object. And I thought they only had per um, face normals. Which would explain this. Um, and that would really suck, because then we really need to get another model, because this would be useless. Um... Okay, no. Position of each vertex, UV position of each uh, coordinate vertex, vertex normals, good, yeah. So that should be fine. Um, mm. 
Is there anything I've done when loading this thing in that might cause this? Because we're not doing much funky to this, so I shouldn't expect... I wouldn't expect this kind of... This kind of result. So we are generating... We've got gen normals here. But it had its own normals, didn't it? Why did we put that flag in? Let's take that out. And do a... Yeah, uh, free, all, blah, 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 that, and then test two, bring it back in. Oh, dear, that freaked out. Oh, yes, assertions have failed. That's interesting. Um, by tangents, tangents, normals are all, are all length zero. And then only vertices and texture coordinates were the right length. Well, that's disturbing. So if it's generating normals, if we're relying on it generating normals, maybe it's not... Yeah, but it's probably not generating smooth normals. Ugh. Why? Why, why, why? Um, okay, so we'll have to ab abort that. Or oh, just say continue so the thing keeps running. But Okay, so we did need gen normals. Um, let's see if there's any other flags that we can use to generate like smooth normals, maybe? Um, yes, this. Okay, AI process gen smooth normals. That would be quite nice. Um, let's see what that does. But this feels really... Mm, really suspect. Taking a bit longer than before. Processing, processing, processing. Is it broken? Yes, it's broken. Oh, interesting. Validate flags failed. Fatal error encountered. Blah, 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 blah. Ah, that's interesting. Um, I wonder what he didn't like about the flags. Hmm. Well, everything's gone, so we'll need to start this again. And what's happening. So that is deed. Always fun to completely crash it. Haven't done that in a while. But I've got a feeling we're going to do it a good few times today. <laughs> Darius, alright then, we need to get this Patreon going. Man, there's just... <laughs> what a lovely idea. But it's just... We are so niche. We are so niche. It would be really cool if... if, if man... Oh, there's lots of dreams. So, yeah, over the next few years, I would really like to... We're going we're gonna to try and do the games thing. Hopefully that works. Probably fails, because most things do. Uh, but that's fine. Um, but, yeah. Um, if it succeeds, then my next thing to do is actually buy a place to live. And I want somewhere small and out of the way, so I can keep my cost of living down very low. And then, so I can focus more on coding and all that kind of stuff. So I'm trying to push in that direction. Um, I've got some other projects I want to get done in my 40s. So there's a lot lot, lot of study to do and lots of other things. But I, I would love Kepple to be better and tooling around this stuff to be better. Um, but yeah, to be honest, I, like all the stuff that Borrowdust is doing right now is awesome. And I think I'm just going to be using tons of his libraries, especially his wrapping around UI stuff. I, uh, yeah, I need to be using that. Where, where am I? What am I doing? Okay, so I need to, we've got a question of, like, the, there's a struct being defined too late. So we've got, oh, what's foo? <laughs> so we've got foo. Uh, what was this for? Oh, this was to, to calculating the tangents and bitangents. Okay, we don't need to worry about that yet. Um, it's freaking out in render. I expect it's saying there's no class named asymp thing. I guess that's correct. That is correct, actually. Um, so this is being defined. Okay, it's just that this is defined up here and asset thing is defined down here. So let's just paste that there and say try recompiling and it works. Hooray. I thought it was going to be where the um, 
GPU struct was defined, but actually that was fine. Play, start. Right, so actually before we... No, it's fine. Yeah, this, this should work. We should get up to this scene. And then, of course, all the FBOs are the wrong sides. So we say reset, and we're back. And we're fine. And then, then and then, we get back to assets. And what are we doing? This is arsing up. And when we tried to get it to do smooth normals, and it was complaining about a flag not being right, um, which is kind of interesting. Um, let's, uh, whoops, let's grep again for that. Now this is, I, I did copy it from this place, which is commented out where, yeah, for a reason. So probably wasn't the best choice. Um, let's do AI process. Let's find the one that's actually being used, like this one. Um, AI process gen smooth normals. Now I thought we were doing something quite like that before. Um, let's look at assets again. Can you see what it is yet? They're exactly the same. Okay, so when we use this, it's going to crash. Vi. Well, it is possible that the... Okay, so we're... We're having to use our asymp fallback libs um, because the... CL bindings are out of date compared to the ASIMP version that's now shipping, um, that's being shipped by the Ubuntu package manager. So they're shipping v4, we need v3. Is it possible that the one that we've got, the, the build that I've made, doesn't have this flag? Let's go have a look. Um, so in C and just, uh, maybe it was C, just the damn libs. Where is just the damn libs? Oh, here we go. Um, let's grep for smooth. And then, um, process, because here we go, AI is process gen smooth normals. So that seems to be the, uh... That looks like it's the, um enum thing we're after. Let's just do this. Wonder where it's actually defined. Here we go. Okay, so, sorry if that text is a bit too small on the stream. It's uh, there. Oh, it's plenty wider than 80 characters, so it's um, difficult to fit it all on. But yeah, this is definitely the thing we're looking for, Gen Smooth Normals. Maybe you can't use Gen Normals and Gen Smooth Normals together. Maybe that's it. Uh, let's com Let's just try it. Oh, that worked. Hello. Okay, that didn't crash. Right, so let's uh, not gen normals in future and do gen smooth normals. And how does it look inside here? Oh, look, little things. It has shaded a little more smoothly, it seems. Ah, fuck. Gone to the wrong place. Oh, no! What are you doing, you fool? Come on. Where are we? Here we go. Great, now it's smoothing all of them. So our nice hard corners are uh, smooth. But at least our columns now look uh, a little smoother. Yeah, that's what I'm expecting. Okay, so we, we haven't fucked up. It's, well, so much. It's just the data we're working with. Um, but that's looking a little better. Uh, you're seeing a couple of places where this is this brown one here. This is our fallback. So um, when I load this stuff in, I was like, hey, um, if if there's a texture to define, 
um, then we look up the diffuse texture in um, in that list and we yeah we grab the value um, and if it's not used we just use the rust texture which is I think this one so there's a few places around here that that's being used on these pillars there um, so hey that actually looks like something now what the fuck nice oh okay nice that's actually working and lagging again that is really interesting those lag oh there we are again look at that massive lag all of a sudden that is really exciting what could it be I think we might go on a massive kind of a uh, I think we're gonna go on a detour here some of this stuff is very funky look at this what is going on here I mean, it's probably because the, the light is inside the geometry, which is really fucking things up. Um, but I'm not sure. There's some there's some ugliness going on here. I would like this to be bigger, though. So let's... Uh, we need to add scale to our stuff. Um, let's do that. Let's commit first. Otherwise, I'll get in trouble. So... Yes, we seem to be able to... Like, render textured asymp assets now. So let's go with that. Um, yay, textured asymp models. Hurrah. Um, Fond of him saying, keeps informed, especially if you have to pause the streams to code. Thanks, man. Yeah, I'm going to try and keep them going because this is... What's so lovely about doing these streams now, like now is it's it forces me to spend a couple of hours on you know lispy stuff, which otherwise I might not make time for in the week. Um, so I'm really I'm really happy with it. Um, Darius says make sure to keep us informed with game releases. I will do. I'm actually hoping to start doing uh, technical streams for what I'm working on uh, very soon because we're doing some. I mean, it's, there's nothing groundbreaking, but it, I, I find it exciting and it's nice to, yeah, nice to show what we're doing. I've basically been waiting until I don't feel completely incompetent in Unity. Um, just because, again, total noob at that stuff, but it's coming along pretty fast, so we're getting there. We're getting there. But th those streams won't inter interrupt these streams if I can help it at all. Um, I'm missing people. Coffee tree on. Yes. Um, there's YouTube things being linked by Barrett, which means <laughs> Homestar Runner stuff. Excellent. Quality, quality, quality. Right. Um, <laughs> trying to get me to move to New Zealand again. I like it here, man. New Zealand was great, but I really like it here. Um, I will try and stay here if possible. Um... Sheep Simulator will finally be released. Man, that's really differentiating yourself from the pack there. <laughs> this is cool. Yeah, I, I see. I'm not sure what those that lag is. I've I've seen it a couple of times more recently, and I'm not sure. Oh, I'm not sure why. Um, but it would be good. It would be fun to go and see where Keppel is wasting memory these days and stop it because I hate that so much and basically we can just start by wrapping um, we can turn on profiling and wrap a timing block around something run a hundred frames and see where the memory goes um, because there'll be a lot of allocations and not all of them are necessary in fact very few of them will be necessary in this scene so anyway what have I got going on here I was doing something what was I doing scale we were going to do scale let's look at things um Let's just add a float. Init arg. Scale. Init form. Accessor. Scale. Great. Now we've got it. Let's go and use it in draw. Um, let's go to pipelines. Whoops, wrong one. Let's go here. Um, let's go to the vertex stage. And let's take a 
scale. Ah, Chris, stop fucking it up. Floats. That's one there. And then we'll go up here and add it up here too. And then we are going to just go and make sure we're actually using that down here. So, um, scale is scale of the thing. And down here, scale of the thing. Now what? So now we just need to use it. So whenever we get the position, can we just times that by scale? That might work. Um, let's go down to, oops, sunburnt stage, here we go, um, good, so we've got that, so now we should be able to, I mean we can do it in a very hacky way down here just by going, let's go 10, you know, that's a bit bigger now, um, and that's pretty cool, so, Then when we load, um, we load our model. Let's pass in a scale as well. Optional um, scale be one by default. It's going to complain that we don't use it anywhere. Um, but when we make a thing, we can pass in um, a scale as well. That's going to complain that that isn't defined like that. So we add scale, recompile this, jump back again. Um, yeah, I got told a, a while ago that, I'm, and I don't think this is entirely right, but I move fairly quickly uh, through code. I mean, I, I do move fairly quickly. I, I don't consider myself a particularly like adept Emacs person when it comes to navigating around like really fast. But there's a lot of things I know. Um, it's a lot of like expected behavior, but like I find Emacs very predictable. Um, and so that you can start, yeah, you start just relying on certain behaviors working and then you can move quite quickly because you just can anticipate what's going on. So when I'm doing jump to definition, if you want to do that uh, following along at home, that's alt and then um, the full stop or period. Um, and then you keep alt held down and you can hit comma and it jumps back. So you can go back to forwards really quickly, that stacks. So if like we've gone to here and then if we go to, um, I don't know, element. So here, uh, now we're in SPCL source code then we can do alt comma back to here and alt comma back to um, the original position. So that stacks. Um, anyway, so we take our scale because we are using that. And then we've got make, what was it? Oh, it's going to be make instance, surely. There's going to be one of these, and we can just pass scale in there. Okay, so now we can say free all of those asm things, and we're going to um, change test to. Um, we're going to give it, we're going to say 10 times, because that actually looked all right to me. Um, test two. Whoop. Um, and now we've got a nice big scene to play with. And a light. And all this is being lit up by ambient light. That looks upside down. And that looks pitch black. Um, that's kind of interesting, actually, because... Wasn't that fine before? I'm a little confused now. Oh, got them outside the walls. They're in the walls! That was our cute little door that was around the right way. What have we done that's flipped it upside down? How strange. <laughs> oh well. Um, that's going to actually matter a lot of places, surely. Might matter on that as well. Maybe that crest is meant to be up the other way. We'll see. Anyway. Um, but what are we going to do with this? Well, they don't hurt for now, I suppose. So, let's... Add test two to the actual 
default scenes, and when we do a reset, we get it back because it's kind of useful now. Um, let's commit this. We've got that. Saying is there some HTML in your game, Joe? Well, yes. I mean, yeah, there's a... Uh... I mean, at, at some point, we're, we want to look at um, some model for selling extra asset packs, so I need to do need to do some stuff there. I'll probably reach out to a more qualified web dev, seeing as I'm very much married to one, so that will be... That will definitely be the way I go there. <laughs> Just contract him to do some work. Um, so that's good. Um, Booker T, the MGs. What's going on? Backersdlc.com. Oh, what's that? Oh, I thought that was no. I thought that was the thing I'd have to compete with. Boo! Right. Anyway, we've got a scene. Um, what are we gonna do now? Well, that's actually a good question. What are we gonna do now? Oh, it's just such a bummer that these these square parts look really rounded, like on the lighting at least. Um, let's find an example. Like, is there anything that's got? Oh no, maybe it's not. Oh no, it's pretty bad actually. I think that's kind of smooth gradient round there. Ugh. Why are the normals? Why were the normals wrong anyway? Or why are the normals missing on all those things? It just makes me want to use a different test asset entirely. And I mean, that, this doesn't mean any of this is a waste of time. We get to keep all of this, but um, still. Bah. Um, hey, wait a second. We did... Uh, oh, I know, I know why that's upside down. I'm an idiot. Because I assumed... Wrong. Wrongly. Incorrectly. That treat UVs was to do with our um, normal mapping stuff. But it totally wasn't. It was the thing that was flipping the Y. Um, so let's go back into this, where we grab the UVs. Where do we grab the UVs? Down here. UV? Oh no, that's passed in. Here. And it's taken from there. So yeah, we can just do treat UVs, like this. Boop, boop. And now everything's flipped. Good. And our door looks correct again. That's a relief. And our camera is way too goddamn slow. So let's, uh, go and change that. Where are we? So, left shift, mouse button left, and there we go. What am I doing here? Oops. Am I just doing the wrong? Oh yeah, I am. I'm totally doing because this is the left mouse is rotate. Oh, I'm just making that absolutely nightmarish. Let's do that again and see if it's fixed back up. Yep, yeah, there we go. Ugh. Okay. Yeah, I'm not even noticing what keys I'm using because it's just so kind of muscle memory kind of thing. Um, okay, so what have we got? Keyboard button. Then we're going to go two direction and then we multiply it by some factor. And then DT. Oh, that's the delta time stuff. And the factor is 30. So let's bump that up to 90. And then when you hold down shift, it's going to be 150. And let's do that. Now that's a bit quicker. And then when I hold shift, yeah, that's not as much nicer. Okay. But yeah, I think we're going to go and get another asset because the idea that we're having to... Ugh, the idea that these normals are just wrong. That it's smoothing all the normals indiscriminately because it just doesn't know what better to do. I don't know. Susky hose. Hey, a bit late, but no well. No problems, man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, let's start again. I'm fine with that. No, it's... Uh, 
It's all right. We were just getting some uh, asset loading stuff working, and now we finally got it to... Um... There was a bunch of things that didn't seem to have normals, and then we told it to generate normals, and they were all kind of per-face normals, which looked like garbage, so we said them to be smooth normals, but now, obviously, it smoothed everything. So all our sharp corners have turned into horrible smooth corners, which is just trash, so I do not know. Push! Push, push, push. Yes, I will push. Um... Hey, baggers, I noticed that samblers don't have a free yet. They probably don't in the current release. You're right. Um, but they might do now. Let's go and have a look. Let's go free um, samblers. That looks promising. Yep, free sampler. Yep, that's uh, that's been implemented. I did that a little while ago. Um, but it has been a while since I've done a release. Um, I actually need to do that because there were a ton of changes this month. Um, little things, but yeah, obviously that's one of them. Oh, somebody's got beer. I wish I could beer and code. That would be great. Um, Medellin says, getting there is no applicable method for the generic function... Classic meshes, SB reader when called. Oh, wow. Wait a second. Let's have a look at this. Oh, when called with arguments, nil. Uh, then something is probably my fault. <laughs> Let's see. What I'll do is I'll close this and start it up again, and we'll see what I've broken. Um, whoop. Um, yep. Way and speed up the camera because we've got a nice big scene now. So let's push those. Um, and I'm going to kill, lisp, and start it up again. And let's see what breaks when we start this up. It'll be something daft. Talking of daft, actually, that was our little 2D engine that we were working on for a bit. When I, I haven't touched it for a while because by the end of the game jam, I was thoroughly sick of it. Um, mainly because I, I threw in so many hacks to be able to get the games to work on time that I just feel kind of like disgusted by it. So what it really needs is a post-mortem and uh, kind of a review and find out what things, to look at the things that were hacked in to see if they were hacked in out of desperation or necessity. And for the things where it's a necessity, um, how we can come up with better abstractions that would have included that in the first place rather than having to circumnavigate the uh, model that we made. Or we may come to the conclusion that the model we came up with uh, is bollocks and we can't keep that. So either way, we will see. We will see what else is going on. Um, a bag of stream without beer is not a bag of stream for me. Oh, good, man. I'm really glad that... Yeah, people having good drinks and drinks and chill. Um, <laughs> Barrett, yes, it is a bit early for drinks for you. It's like, what, 5 or 6 a.m. or something? Still, respect for making it here. Um, Suski, uh, Hose is saying, so I've been diving into Vulcan for a while. I keep thinking I want to make a Lispy Vulcan, uh, Lispy library for Vulcan, kind of like Keppel. Do you have somewhere good to start on learning Vario enough that I could use it as a dependency for Vulcan library? Yeah, yeah, totally. Um... It should work fine with, like, Vulkan in general. Because, I mean, it's just using GLSL. Um, we did have a stream, I think, one time on using... Now I'm going to have to go and look at myself, which is not great. But we will, we will endure. Uh, yeah, this should be fine. Okay, let's just make sure that's not going to lock. Yeah, that's going to lock me in there. Okay, cool. Uh, thought it was going into my email for a second for some stupid reason. I don't want to put that in the stream. So, little bits of lisp. I'm pretty. Ah, uh, no, stop, stop, stop. Go away. Right, okay. Let's go and look for um, Vario. Really? Not found anywhere? Oh, this is little bits of lisp. You moron. You even said it out loud. 
um, playlists. Uh, pushing pixels with lists. That's the one we want. And you're still going to take me to a video. I don't want that. I just wanted the playlist. Dario. Okay, so that was episode three. That's a very long time ago. Oh, I thought we did another episode. Was it not part of this collection? That makes me disturbed. <laughs> um... Well, maybe this one is up-to-date enough, but it's possibly not. Um, but yeah, it should be it should be fairly easy to pull in. Um, I mean, the general, I can show you the general pattern now, is um, what you do is you uh, go Vario, translate, um, and you need to pass in a stage. So you do Vario, um, oh, where is it now? Create stage, I think? Yes. And then you tell it what kind of stage it's going to be. So we, let's make it a vertex stage. Uh, we want to say what version we're going to support. So let's say 4.5. Uh, um, we want to pass in some input variables. So let's do something roughly like um, our... Where is it? Uh, render. Some of our render stuff. Let's have a look. Um, yeah, let's use vert GPNT. Let's just do that. Um, and some uniforms. So uniforms. Are, oh no, actually, these are all meant to be keyword arguments, are they? So input variables. Um, whoops. Uniform variables. And this one we're going to pass in something called foo, and it's going to be a float. Um, then we're going to pass in. We're not going to deal with any shared variables. We're just going to deal with code. Um, so let's pass in some code, and it's just going to be. Something like, and, and you're passing in a, a list uh, because it's basically like the contents of a progon. Um, so let x be uh, foo, and then let's just make a vec4 of x, x, and times x2, or something like this. And that's not going to work because that's not an x. There we go. Boop. OK, so then you've got a compiled vertex stage. And what you want to do with that is just call uh, GLSL code on it. So you go. GLSL code, and uh, yeah, that's your um, that's your shader. So I would say check out that stream. Um, if it's out of date, do let me know, and I'll do another episode on Vario. I'm happy to do that. Um, but yeah, then there's um, as well as translate. There's one that's used much more often, which is the rolling translate. And here you pass in a list of stages. Um, and what this does is it does all the stitching together. So it makes sure the variable names line up between the stages and make sure the types line up and all that kind of stuff. Um, so really, this is the one that ends up being used all the time. So let's make a full pipeline. So this will be a vertex stage going to a fragment stage. Um, let's actually give it something to pass along. So we've got values. Um, and we're going to pass along, I don't know, some UV. <laughs> <laughs> it's a vec2 of 0 and 0. Okay, we're passing that along. So the input variables to this are now going to be a vec2. I don't know why Emacs sometimes does that. We'll just call it UV. Uh, we're not going to care about the um, uniform variables. We're not going to have them. And all we're going to do is we actually, let's add another uniform variable. We'll just make up one. It's called Sam and it's a sampler 2D. Uh, I think there's a hyphen there. And then all this one is going to do is call texture on the sampler with the UVs. Let's try that. Yeah, so now we've got a full pipeline. And you can see that the um, output arguments here, this is the block from vertex stage and the variable vertex stage out one. You can see this is the from vertex stage now as an in. And here's your vertex stage out one here, used down here and all that kind of stuff. So. It's the same kind of plumbing um, that you that, that Keppel has. Keppel does a bunch of extra things um, to just make it just make it fit better. Basically, there's a bunch of extra kind of things I do. So, for example, um, we support the idea of uh, being able to use a um, a global a special variable inside your shader. Um, so I think we've got here, like exposure is um, just some parameter, but we use it inside this, this stage here. 
and this is called a stem cell, uh, which means it doesn't really know what type, well, sorry, it, it's, this is the implicit uniform injection and it gets a type of stem cell and it grabs it. Basically what happens is it's, it's you're gonna have to provide something, some function that gets called, um, that's passed the name of the, um, the unknown variable. And then you have to um, go and look up, like work out what the type is and just return the name of the type. That is mentioned in the other stream. So if you check that out, that's probably a good place to start. Um, there are plenty enough bugs as well, so I'm really sorry for really sorry for that. Vario is not something I've been able to give enough of my time, as uh, I'm sure Enfiano would uh, um, <laughs> very much tell you. He's got some issues that have been there for quite a while, and I feel really bad for not touching them. But you know, time is what time is, and I can only do so much. So yeah, that's what I would say. Um, I'd say just uh, yeah, check out that, have a play. Um, and uh, yeah, file bugs, please. I, I'm, and I, I just apologize for the rate that I'm able to get to them because it's not fast enough. And it, it bugs me, but, you know, I also know that's how it has to be. Um, what did I miss while I was rambling? He's a rambler. Um, but Vulcan is super cool. Um, and it would be really interesting to see what you do with it. Have you got it? What, what are your ideas in regards to making it um, accessible? Um, like, because it's a pretty, it, it's an API where you're pretty much asked to design your infrastructure. So, um, yeah, I'm really interested in what your, what your intended approach will be. I'd be also very interested in, uh, it feels like a good place to have some kind of, um, I don't know, actually. I, I don't really know what I'm talking about. I know that if I was going to start there, I'd be very interested in looking at defining allocators for GPU memory um, and allowing users to do that and also defining, again, start there and also start very early on the, um, oh, what do you call it? The message queues um, of, of tasks that are passed to the GPU. My brain is just fuzzing out on me. It's not helping at all. Anyway, yeah, that's roughly where I'd want to start, but it's a task that I'm just not ready to take on. Um, but 3B has done some great work on wrapping up Vulcan, so that's kick ass. <laughs> right. So when can we get our tech snuffle perens hoodies from Cafe Press? What? Would people actually buy swag? That would be hilarious. I'd love to. <laughs> I'd love to put up some, some pushing pixels and stuff. Uh, T-shirts or hoodies. That would be hilarious. Oh man, that'd be nuts. How does that even work? That just sounds like a way for me to end up spending money. But if there's a way to do that easily, that would be that would be really funny. So funny, just like five times in one sentence there. Dumbass. Right. So this Kihos is also saying, or oh, Jose, how do I say your name? Suski? Suski? I also tend to work a lot in Clojure. Vario looks like it has a BSD2 license, but I was wondering if uh, you'd be good with me trying to port it to Clojure as well. I probably want to maintain this Vulkan library across both languages. Dude, I I'm open for that. I would. It's really tricky because I, I wouldn't want someone, I, I wouldn't want to put someone through the Vario code base because Vario started as a, literally as a, um, like bodging together strings to make the Vario, to make the GLSL code. And it grew organically from there. And organically obviously means hideously. And there are some, there is plenty of bad ideas and there's incomplete ideas and all that kind of stuff in it. It might be worth using it as an inspiration for some things, like I, like for example, one of the things that you might not need is that um, you can define new kinds of declarations, so basically metadata that can be attached to a value inside the compiler, and then the compiler tracks that metadata around. So I use that in. Um, we're completely off topic, but I don't give a shit. We're gonna keep doing this for a bit. So um, sorry to those who want to see more uh, more assets. Um, kebble.spaces. Now, where was the stuff in here? Rep. Um, define. Let's just see what we've got in here. Yeah. 
I define a new kind of uh, uh, metadata, um, which uh, has which basically stores what space, what vector space a given vector is in. And then I can attach that using declare. Um, I can attach the information to the vector and then it's tracked around uh, with the value. And it's tracked in and out of functions as well. So to be able to do that, there's a lot of, um, yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of funky code in Vario to do that, um, do that tracking around. And it wasn't done in a sensible way. Um, like it's not a, it's not a like a proper compiler. Oh, man, it, it's a really weird one. Say, yeah, it's a it's a messy. It's not a proper compiler. There's loads of bad practices and stuff in there. If I was doing it again, I would do it differently, kind of thing. Um, let's see where this spatial meta thing was used because I can't remember. It's been a long time since I looked at this code. Oh, that really wasn't what I was after. Um, da, 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 da. declare. Okay, yeah. So I can. This is ends up being put into Vario code, but I can declare that the spatial meta um, of this variable is this. So I end up putting a, a an object in there which um, defines which vector space you're in, and then that tracks around with the value. Um, and it allows me to write code like, do I have any of this stuff in here? Space. Um, I don't think I'm using it very well in here. Let's do, oh yeah, so I can have, I can define that all, everything inside here is in clip space and this, and then inside model space, I make this spatial vector. And it implicitly knows that it's in model space now. And because it's returned out of this scope and lands in clip space, there's automatically a conversion from model space to clip space that's done. And that's all handled through this uh, variable tracking stuff. Um, yeah, I, I would I'd want to rework this anyway. But um, there was a lot of there was a lot of kind of churn in the compiler for supporting that, which is probably not needed by anyone but me for that one thing. So yeah. I don't know. Where was I? Way back here. Render. Okay, cool. Now let's see again. Rambler. Um. <laughs> Sergeant Queer. Do you have any good tips for seducing the fiance with Lisp? No. There is that is that is not possible. Don't attempt it. <laughs> That's just that's such a fucking weird question. <laughs> yeah. Um, Suskiho is saying it's all pretty involved, but what I want to start doing is building abstractions in a very slow layered approach. Basically, I want to ensure that if you work with any of the abstractions I write, you should be able to drop down so that you're not limited by the abstractions I write. 100% man. I, and so, okay, like that's a, that is a, I've been working on the abstraction ideas so far. I would love to see some links for that, man. If you've got anything, if you're doing any videos, if you're doing any write-ups, I would love to read them. Um, if you don't mind, I'll tell you where I... Because I, I wanted the exact same thing, and I feel that Keppel kind of lets people down in that regard. Um, and there's one place in particular that it was really... It really got painful. Um, I, actually, I'm, I'm just going to go through the chat, and then I'm coming back to this, because that's a, that's a really interesting area. And yeah, very, very close to my heart. Um, Suski Hose. Suski Hose. Excellent. Bird says, yes, I would buy. Oh, well. Darius say, I'll be in on buying swag. You people are insane. I love it. Okay. Uh, Cafe Press with country various, blah, blah, blah. I'll I'll look into it. Let me let me just write that down the whiteboard because that's hilarious. Um, cafe press. Swag. Right, where are we? Um da -da 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 -da. Median Cigaros. 
Is there a Sigur Ross reference in here? Let <laughs> me start with some brothers. Oh, yeah, Sigur Ross are awesome. Um, whoop, the ships are calling each other. Um, cool. I was like looking forward to play when I walk into someone on the street wearing a witless watch bag. I'm sorry. That's that's fantastic. <laughs> it will be Yeah. If I'm gonna have any anything like that, it's gonna be very small amount of stuff in one place on a show. I hate how people whenever they have a thing they just slap such big garish stuff across it that I would never wear it. But that's yeah, I just wanna wear black t shirts all the time. So anyway, let's have a look. Um yes, we were talking about the dropping through abstractions and absolutely want to be able to do that and obviously like a bunch of the things in Keppel have been made so their relationship is very one-to-one -one with uh, OpenGL so you um let's just look at an example make GPU array um you can't get very far without oh yeah I'm not I haven't actually got Keppel initialized yet one second defo temp zero and then Keppel Rebel. You gonna load? Please load. Oh, I think it did. What? Is something else gone wrong here? It is very strange. This is just a day for problems. How interesting. Oh well. That array shouldn't have caused any problems because Keppel has a thing where if you make a GPU array or something like that before GL is initialized, it just keeps the parameters. And then when GL, now, GL initializes, it goes and um, like completes this, sets it up. Anyway. So yes, um, a lot of things try to map fairly one to one. So, I mean, it's not always uh, always practical. Um, so, like at first, obviously, you wrap buffers, which are just big blocks of memory, um, and then, but most of the uses, I mean, in GL, like you've got big chunks of repeating data with the same layout, which is just an array. So it made sense to add arrays pretty fast. Um, but oh, def var temp zero that and um, so yeah behind the scenes obviously behind a buffer back GPU array there's a buffer and the buffer is actually just a list of arrays <laughs> of GPUs again because it's it's very circular um, that are um, of bytes rather than whatever the type that you were interested in the reason it uses the arrays it just actually makes it easier that some of the um for when you come to doing sharing data later, it made some stuff easier. So yeah, that isn't too bad. Um, but one of the one of the things is like with um, states, you do a lot of binding and unbinding. So what made sense at first was to do things with like with buffer bound, and I did this for quite a while. I had things like this, and you would give it a buffer, um, or you would give it a GPU array or whatever it was, and it would be bound for the duration of the thing, which fits fairly nicely because you end up expanding it to something like Progen. And then uh, bind buffer to of x, and then at the end it'll be in an unwind protect, of course. But you bind buffer to zero again, um, and you have your stuff in the middle. But the problem is then you're locked into unbinding all over the place, um, and that's really changing state is obviously very expensive in GL, relatively expensive. So you want to avoid that, and the best way to avoid that I've seen from like well. In the, in the few little projects I've looked at, one of the ways it's very common is to have some kind of cache. So you don't rebind the buffer if it's already bound. So you just have to keep track of it, which suddenly means you're keeping track of a subset of GL uh, of GL state. So when you look at the Keppel context, this thing is a big old cache of some of the GL state. And some of it's just collections of... Um, different uh, objects but then what happens is whenever you say um, like 
um, bind GPU buffer, or is it, what's it, GPU buffer bound, um, capital context to, I don't know which target, um, what targets are there? Now I'm actually forgetting. Um, is it just vertex buffer? No, that's, uh, yeah, array buffer, let's do that. So that's the, that's the uh, thing that is currently bound to that target, um, and you'd rebind it by setting it. But if you set it to the same thing, um, it doesn't actually do the GL bind. And that gives you a big chunk of performance back, but then now you've got this lump of state, which isn't GL. And as soon as you want to drop down to using GL commands again, you're kind of buggered because you need to have a way to basically say, hey, in this block, um, you either have to tell the cache that things have changed, or you have to say, in this block, don't use the cache, and the cache has to restore itself and things like this, and you tell it what things might be dirty, or it has to check. Yeah, it's not great. It's not great, but it also seemed kind of unavoidable um, to get the kind of lispy style that I wanted. And that's actually one of the biggest conflicting parts of, uh, of Kebel to me. Um, yeah, it makes me kind of sad, <laughs> but I haven't been able to avoid it, and I can't think of a better solution. Um, if you don't have things being vaguely scoped, then you have to do all the bind and unbind stuff, which is just regular GL. Um, I mean, if this was if this was something like Rust, and you could track, yeah, you could track try and track that scope, pass that back with your object and track when things... Oh, I don't know. I don't know. There's a, there's a lot of kind of things you could do, but um, it ends up coming back to having some kind of object that you're dragging around that has state information. Um, yeah. It's kind of interesting. Um, so that's why I say any thoughts, really, really welcome, because this is kind of just... It's fairly open. Thank you for the uh, the kind words on Keppel, though. That's um, that's really nice. I'm, I'm I'm trying to make like to to keep it as GL as possible. Um, CL Vulcan low to mid level common. Yeah, yeah. That's the uh, 3B stuff, which is awesome. Um, there's next metal representation of the C API that's available from Kronos. I'm going to write a program that transforms that into CFI code. Is that not already what he's doing? Because that's definitely what he was doing for the uh, for the GL bindings. Um, and yeah, he has the he seems to use the vk.xml um, definition. Let me just drop that link in. So it might be if it's slightly out of date, it might just be worth updating that XML file and and rerunning the thing and seeing what you get. Um, yeah, 3B's been outstanding at keeping the GL stuff up and working. It's been it's been really cool. Um, Cisco, Cisco has, uh, has <laughs> oh God, Cisco is saying Oh, okay. All, all I'd seen that it was um, about a year old, which is older than the most recent Vulcan. Yeah, so it might be time to drop a new file in and see what happens. Where are we at? It's 20 past nine, um, and we have a black screen. That's rubbish. Um, so, what? <laughs> oh, yeah, we're at this really disappointing juncture in our... Uh, juncture? Is that a word? Somebody look up juncture. <laughs> Moment in our... Um, in our setup where it seems like our asset is shit. It seems like we've got a problem with our asset anyway. <sighs> Let's bring that light up here and um, have a look at what it's doing on this. Because I need to know. I need to know. Um, there's our light set. So let's look at... Favorites list. Where's our lights? Uh, 
It's a light set. Cool. There we go. Um, woof. That's a lot of stuff. That was more than I expected. Oh, yeah, because we're only using a few of them, though, aren't we? Um, I think we're only using two. So all of this is garbage, except the first two. So let's... Um, Let's have a look at lights again. One second. Lights is ugh, wrong keys. Lights is a UBO. So let's call UBO data on that, and we get the GPU array, uh, which have dimensions one. Um, yes. Okay. So let's say with GPU array as C array. Um, C A R R. Go away. And yeah, so then we could do. Um, a ref into this, which is A ref zero into the C array. And then we've got the uh, light set struct, which is not defined there. Why did I jump up here? GPU array BB. That's not where I want it to be. Um, here we go. Um, light set P lights. It's going to get us that array, and then we can just do A ref. Oh no, it's not going to be A ref, is it? It's going to be A ref C for each of these. So yeah, we get a light. Um, and a light has a position, a color, and so let's do. Uh, position, so it can be P light pos. Um, and yeah, now we can set it. Let's drop this down to a new line just for readability, since we're doing this in the REPL for some reason. Uh, let's bring it from 5 to 15. Is not a vector. Correct, it is not a vector. I'm an idiot. Say continue. Um, and let's set the Y to be that. Um, so I'm guessing that's a bit higher, but it's not high enough. Um, oh, wait, I'm probably changing. Which one am I probably changing? Let's uh, set ourselves up here so I can see what I'm, I'm fucking with. One hundred. Hmm, that doesn't seem to be making any change, which is rather disturbing. We are, we're probably, because we're animating this in the shader, we're probably setting its height there as well. Which means all, all of this is is for naught. Uh, we can actually test this just by going minus 5 and none of them go away. So I'm guessing, um, let's just pull G uh, lights again, just to see. Whoops. Oh, it's not actually updating. Ha, huh, I wonder why. That's rather strange. That should have worked. Hmm. I'm intrigued now. What was its position before? Fine. Ah, yeah, now that moved. Okay, so... Huh, so setting one of the components of the vector wasn't working like that. I guess because when we do ARFC, we're getting the actual vector back, and then we're changing the Lisp vector rather than... Yeah, rather than that in memory. Ugh. That's not ideal, but okay. Eh, vaguely logical, I suppose. So anyway, let's set that back to 5, because this isn't actually the one we want. Well, the one we want to manipulate is... 1. Which is this guy apparently, um, and we just want to start bringing it up a bit and see where, see where it ends up. Um, let's see if twenty-five. Nope. Let's just try with eight. So it was. Oh Christ! Come on! I'm clicking the wrong thing. Oh, I, oh yeah, I've put it over there. Oh, fool. Fool of a took. Where are we? So, 
Put it back at five again. Let's put it at, is it 10? Yeah, there we go. That's a bit over there now. Uh, let's put it at 12, 15, nice and close. Now we can start moving it up. Let's uh, put it at 10, 100. Okay, so that's a bit higher than I expected, well, than I needed, so let's put it at 80. Uh, what I really wanted to do was check what's going on here. Ugh. So. It is animating, so let's go and look at what we're doing with light. There it is, sign, and then we're timesing it by 10. Um, it's the first one, let's do this. Okay, so now we've increase the distance probably more than it needs to be so let's do 60 those shadows just don't look right to me at all fine for the the cylinders but the way this goes around that corner, there's just no definition. Like... Let's go and take the zero one and put it way out of the way so it's not interfering. I don't know. That looks very like the smooth stuff to me. Not really happy with it. Does that seem right to you? That that looks just these just look like curved. What I should actually do, what we should do is actually plot the normals. I got some code for that in the past, so that would actually be a good thing to do in the last half an hour. Then we can see, rather than me just guessing this, because I've got a terrible eye. Um, so, um, oh yeah, sorry. Uh, oh, Metian, yeah, I forgot, I'm sorry. Wait a second though, you're still getting that problem, which is strange. Because we've reloaded and didn't have that error. I wonder what, what you're getting. There's no applicable method for generic function, and it's calling a slot accessor. So I best guess we're calling, yeah. Global class imp meshes um, when called with argument nil. So what it's saying is, here. I'm thinking it's this, um, which means that scene is nil, um, which means that, I mean, have you updated this uh, path to point to, um, the sponsor, the object file? That's the problem as well, because I've been fucking around with that uh, project in general, because like, again, like I said before, I manually went and object updated all of the .jpg and png stuff, so really I should have to pack this object up and put it in the project as well. Um, I think I can do that. It's a bit, I mean, it's a bit gnarly because you shouldn't really do that, but... Yeah, so I expect that will be the problem. Um, anyway, so let's have a look. Um... Suski Hose is... Sorry, I'm just making up your name now. Suski Hose is saying if you're... Using AtSemp, but I don't know about ClassMP specifically, but you should be able to have it auto-generate normals, which I do. Um, and in this case, it might be that the model is bad. The more recent versions of the scene from Crytek use more modern features. Yeah, I should actually check that out. Um, that's a really that's a really good point. So what we do, as you should actually see it here, um, we do, originally we just had um, process gen normals, uh, which worked, but all of the it was generating like per face normals. All of the triangles, all the vertices had like the, the same um, normals for every every vertex on the face, um, which was no good. So we did smooth instead, but of course that smoothed everything. Right, I'm very sure it smoothed everything. 
So yeah, let's let's uh, there's a example I have in. Um, I really need to update these examples because they are, they are so old and bad. But they do. It's weird because they do enough. They they they're great for testing. Um, okay, so let's have a look. This is a um, example. Does a basic geometry shader, and all it does is it draws normals um, for an object, which is exactly what we want. Um, so what we're going to do is for the asset objects, we're going to draw the normals for every single uh, vertex. Now the way it works is it takes. Let's have a look. We we pass out the normals from the vertex stage. Let's take this. And let's put it up near Asimp Vertex. Are we still in Assets? Yes, we are. It's not in here, Chris. It is up here. So Asimp Vertex Stage. Bam. Asimp Geom. Let's do this. Um, so what we're going to do is that from this stage hmm that's interesting actually because now I'm in the oh actually this is ah oh, so this is actually like a second pass yeah we actually do this very differently so we just have we have a vertex stage that just puts out um, the position and normals yeah we just do that we do that as a second pass I think that's actually a good idea it's gonna be way simpler than trying to fit it into this pipeline or at least Seeing as we need to move quickly, it's probably a really good thing to do. So let's do this. Um, actually, no, let's not, let's not do it like this. Um, let's just copy this and strip it down. So, asimp um, norm vert stage. Doot, 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 doot. Right. Um, it's funny that we're uploading all these as separate matrices rather than just multiplying them together on the CPU side, but whatever. Um, okay, so we want to put out the, we still want the clip pass, but we want the, oh yeah, there's the world space normal, that's exactly what we want. So, um, then we don't need N0, um, in fact, I don't think we needed N0 ever. Do we want world space normals? Actually, don't know. Um, no, we're going to use that for lighting, so, how do they do it? No, they do it full model to clip, so we should do exactly the same thing. So we're going to do clip norm, which is going to be clip norm, um, which is going to be times the view to clip um, of the view norm. Um, so now we need a view norm. Um, which is just do this view norm. Uh, which is the world to view. Now that's going to have all the translate and stuff like that in it, which we don't really need. Uh, we just need the rotation part of it. So how do we do that? We can do a map four. Um, how do we do this? Ah, this is so simple, but um, I'm not sure what I support. Let's have a look. Map three. Okay. So, yeah, so we need a, um, what's the, uh, what's the command I've got from that? Map 3 is not one from Map 4, so I'm guessing it's M4, um, 2M3 or something like this. Um, 2 Map 3, yeah, okay. Um, let's get rid of that. Yeah, I know, I know, errors. Um... So then we've got a um, three by three matrix, matrix, which is just going to have the rotation um, stuff that we're interested in. We make it back into a matrix four because we're taking, um, well, we're not going to take the world position. We're going to take the um, world norm, I guess. Let's just keep going with this logic because my brain's not firing enough to uh, work out if I'm just talking shit here. Um, view position. So let's just do world norm. Hey, that's what we had before. I should, maybe I shouldn't have nuked world norm. Uh, 
Hmm. Wait a second. Yeah, what do we have up here? Oh, <laughs> it's the exact thing. You muppet. Okay, so we take the normal. Yeah, okay. Let's do this again. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, then we've got the world norm, which it changes to the view norm, which changes to the clip norm. I think that's right. I'm not too sure. And then we've got clip norm. So let's let's do this. Um, there's no thing where we can multiply a map 4 by VEC3, which is this, which is the world norm. Okay, that's a VEC3. Yes, it is. Um, so we can just... Yeah, that compiles. Um, actually, no, because it's just a vector, so we should keep it as zero so it doesn't get translated. Um, it's not, not going to be with that matrix anyway, but that's going to be fine. Um, but what's that going to mean? Is that going to be correct? I guess we'll find out. Yeah, let's just go with it. And then there's asset geom, and this is going to take the normals. It's a bunch of vec threes, which is wrong in this case because this is, needs to be then swizzled down to a x y z. Um, so now it takes a bunch of vec threes, and it does this stuff, which is just going to emit a line in the direction of the normal. We'll see how that goes. And then we've just got the normals frag, which is just drawing it yellow. Um, absent norm. Um, frag. And let's go and rename this so it's in line, asymp norm geom, and make this asymp norm vert. Whoa. And sorry I haven't checked the chat for a bit, I will be back with you guys in just a second. It's one of these times I'm just trying to, trying to knock this out in the last few minutes. Oh, actually, we've got a bit of time. Oh, right, in that case, I'll stop worrying, and I'll actually be a good host and come back. Sorry. I get so flustered by this stuff sometimes, and I don't know why. Because we've been doing this for a year, and it's never been a problem. So, oh, idiot. John. Um, Vec3 of 3, and asymp frag stage. Um, asymp norm frag. Takes nothing. Doesn't like that. Um, oh dear, that's a that's not a helpful error. Look at that. That's garbage. Right. Read comments. Come back. Interesting. Okay, so Suska has Suska has yeah the live reload is it's the tits. It's so good. So rarely have to stop. Um, yeah, the the file isn't in the uh, project at the moment. Um, I need to look at the license. I think it's completely fine uh, just to drop it in, but at the same time, I just don't want to be a dick, so I've got to check. Um, yeah, Marianne, I really should do a better job, actually, of uh, indicating this thing. Um, that's not the download that I used. Um, that CryEngine one, though, that would be really cool. That's where I think I need to go next, is go and pull their one. I used... Uh, I linked it in the last stream. I can't remember what it is now. Um... Actually, let's see. It might still be open because I haven't been on this machine for quite a while. Um, da -da -da -da. Yeah, I used um, I use I didn't use the Crytek one, which was probably dumb in hindsight. But let's have a look because that's the Crytek one. I used the uh, Dubrovnik sponsor. I think. Um, yeah, this is this is the one I think I used. Um, but yeah, I, th I think it's got some issues, and oh, yeah, we'll probably swap it out very soon. And so yeah, I'll probably go for the Crytek one, and I kind of like to get it from their own. Um, I'm going to get it from Crytek next time because they're running all these things through like normal to bump and I don't have support for bump mapping but we just did normal mapping so it would be really nice to use the normal maps and uh, get all that. So that's where I think we're going to go. Um, let's just go through this. 
Um, does the project have a URL pointing at it? No, maybe some instructions on how to fetch and install. No, it doesn't. Um, well, the, if you're asking about the sponsor model, no, I haven't included any instructions. Um, everything I've been doing, I've done on the stream pretty much, apart from the stuff, the little bits pre-stream that I normally introduce. Um, seven times a week. Oh, that'd be great. Problem is that one stream a week is not enough to be a partner. I mean, it could be, but I would just need more people watching. Which is, Or is do you have to be doing multiple streams a week? Because I don't think we get enough to be a partner anyway. But pff. it's um, too bad I'm not a partner. I'd subscribe. What does subscribing do for... Um, Wait a second. Like, yeah, what does subscribing do then? I thought people were able to kind of follow my stuff anyway and get the alerts and things like this. Um, Part of him's teasing me for not checking chat enough. Fair. Uh, casual effects data. What's that? Yeah, that's oh, thank you for linking. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the archive. I'm just not I'm not sold on these models. I, I really want to um, I really want to use the sponsor. Ah, I'm clicking the wrong things. So they come up in chat. Um... <laughs> Such a creep. I've done everything in the stream except for the things that happen. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Um... Barry's are saying, I'm not sure, sorry, subscribing will give you money so you can get filthy rich. That's, yeah, that's strange. Subscribing was give money to access the videos as soon as you release, but I want you to have them all immediately anyway. It's really weird. I mean, if you really want to throw money at me, my Patreon's there, and it's very, very, it's, it's very loved that you do, and um, I know Darius already does that. Thank you, by the way. That was really nice. Um, sorry, I just called you out through... Uh, is that okay? You kind of actually mentioned it in the chat that you were going to do that last time. So that, that's probably all right. I'm sorry. I won't name other people in future for doing things. Um, following is the same as YouTube subscriptions. Subscribing on Twitch is something where I have to pay you £5 a month for emotes and stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah, that mean it'd be fine to have you have crazy emotes and things. Um, yeah, there was some... There was some issue where I remember having before. Also, it's just, it's just Twitch is like, there's just too much song and dance around Twitch. I just want to get on here and talk to you guys and then go again. Like when it, when it's, they're starting to, well, no, they, they've, they've been making it more and more, I don't know, gamified. What are they making it? A bloody mess is what they're making. It. It's very strange. Anyway, how much time we got? 18 minutes. Let's get this working. Um, why is this not okay? I mean, this is a terrible error. This is just garbage. So, passing nil to destructuring bind. Um, odd number of elements in the keyword key value. Oh, right. Oh, that is a terrible error. Okay, right. I need to file that as an issue right now. Because that actually should have been a decent explanation. It'd be a horrible error for uh, non-named um, stages in pipeline. It's an easy fix, um, almost as easy as this spelling mistake. Blah. Oh no, you. There we go. Sign myself, say it's a bug, cool, right, I will get to that, but the only problem is, I just haven't named these, so vertex, geometry, fragment, um, unknown key argument albedo. All right. What? Oh, yeah. Never mind. Recompile that. 
It's because I re because it had the same name. This replaced that pipeline, and everything freaked out. So just continue. Everything's fine now. Um, asymp norm pipeline. Right, and now we need to go and use this. And so how are we going to do that? Let's go to things and go down here. And let's see what we can what we can do. Map G. We're going to map over this pipeline. Let's go and look at render. And what do we actually need to pass in? We need to pass in this buffer stream. I hope that it's okay with only using part of the data. I think it should be. Um, so we've got model world, view, clip, and scale. Model world, view, clip, and scale. And let's just check geom doesn't use any normals and we know that the frag doesn't use any normals. Um, well, I see a lot of yellow dots, which bodes well, but they're rather small. So let's go to render and let's go up here to, why am I doing render in two places? Um, let's go to geom. And then magnitude is 0.1. Let's set it to five. That's rather long. Um, we'll set it to two. And here is the problem. Look, normal sticking directly out from the corner. These ones should be facing this way and these ones should be facing this way. This is just due to um, gen smooth. See, these normals are fine. Well, <laughs> the ones on the edges are still a bit funky, but... Yeah. So my conclusion is this scene is kind of ballsed. And I'm hoping that it's just... Uh... It's because a bunch of things didn't have normals and we had to generate them, which is completely insane. So what we're going to do next week is we're going to grab the... Um... We'll grab the sponsor model. We'll start doing it now, but I expect we'll run out of time. We'll grab the sponsor model from Crytek, um, which should have proper proper things set up for it. And we'll drop this in and see how we uh, see how we work. So yeah. Well, that was nice at least. We got some normals. Look how fuzzy they are. Oh. That's cool. What is this? Oh, they're normals for under here. Okay. Groovy. Doot, doot. Let's have a look. Um, oh, nice. What's going on here? Terry says, the best part is when you have Amazon Prime, you subscribe one streamer per month for free while the streamer gets $5. Oh, that's cool. Um, I wonder if, I don't know if, if I can even get Prime here in Norway. Um, I mean, I'd just rather, I'd rather just give you stuff than... <laughs> and charge you for it, but I really appreciate the the support. But it's uh, yeah, um, I, I I I actually have to update my um, Twitch page because apparently it still says I work at Fuse, which is not true. So I need to go and fix that. Um, thank you for linking my Patreon. That's very sweet of you. Um, Sergeant Queef said, also I've applied for a new job. Hey, congratulations! Um, they wouldn't let my current job wouldn't let me work from home anymore, so I might as well sit in the office belonging to the highest bidder. Dude, well good luck. What kind of work are you looking for? It's uh what's your what's your bag? What's your day job? Do you have a Discord you hang out in or still in IRC, something else? Do I would normally hang out in um less games IRC. I just haven't been there in ages because like my brain's just been full. So it's been only like when am I I'm I'm very rarely working on Keppel stuff. It's normally like for a few hours on a Saturday, a few hours on a Sunday. I should hang out, but I often go down the uh, the coffee shop then just to get some focus. Um, 
so yeah, I, and then I'm not on Wi-Fi because I don't trust any of them. So yeah, that's uh, that's a really bad way of saying no. I'm not on any <laughs> not on any of those things most of the time. I should I should get back on Lisp games though because it, it's it's lovely. I really like it. It's uh, some good people there. So I think we've saying they set up an office in the city I live in for no reason whatsoever. I've been working from home for more than two years now. Yeah, man, if you. If it works for you, that's great. <laughs> when they asked what I thought about it, I was honest and said, I hate it, it's the worst thing you could do and I might might make me quit. That's, uh, apparently that didn't matter. Yeah, that's, uh, well, that's a good reason. If they fuck up your work environment, then that's, that is garbage. Barrett's saying that those, the insidious stag dots they put in color laser printers, <laughs> yes. That's it. All my meshes are uh, seeing where you live. Right. Um, okay. Uh, please push with the normal shown. It's great. Looks like a pigeon repelling thing. <laughs> it's true. It does. Let's, let's push it. Um, show that the normals are Uh, Sergeant Queef saying, right now I work as a developer in e-commerce. Uh, applied for a government job as a back-end developer. Nice. But right now I'm a sysadmin. Dope, man. That's cool. Right. Okay. Uh, what have we got as far as... We've got nine minutes left. Let's just go have a quick look at that uh, Crytek. I saw someone link it. Crytek downloads um, sponsor model here we go represented in several different formats 3ds obj for use for various things I'm gonna see if we can get the uh, oh blimey All right uh, okay temporarily allow um, I think um, Asim opens 3DS. I would quite like to try that, to be honest. Um, and then we've got textures. Nice. Boop. Save. This is what I need to do. Download semi-sizable files when I'm streaming. I'm sure this is going to do nothing to my, uh, my bandwidth. Actually, this is on Wi-Fi at the moment, so it's probably going to be a bit slow. But that's fine. And let's open... Have I got Nautilus around here? Okay. New spawns. That's where we'll shove it. Yeah. So I think that's it. I think once we get a good a good version of this model in, we'll have a really nice scene to play with. And um, hopefully these all... Cause the way they were talking about it, the fact they did normal to bump suggests that all these have proper normal maps, which means all the stuff that we've been doing should immediately apply, which is great. Um, oh, awesome. This is really exciting, actually. Uh, let's extract that to... Um, uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, 3D models, new spawns, extract, share the files. Oh, right, that's uh, just that's just a max file. That's not what I expected. Okay, that's uh, that was dumb of me. Unless that is the 3DS format, I'm just used to seeing it called .3DS rather than. Um, Oh well, we've got this as well. Let's extract that to the same place. Where is it? Oh, for fuck's sake. Um, um. My head's getting really messed up now because on one of my machines I'm using um, the Emacs window manager and here I'm using Stump and they're all tiled and they're slightly different setups at the moment so I'm just... Ah, with everything. Um... 
textures. Here we go. Extract. Home. Models. New spawns. Boop. Profiles. Here we go. Cool. Hey, look at this. Nice. Proper normals. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, this is way better. Look at all this stuff. Oh, and some masks. We haven't done any stencil stuff yet. So we get to do some stencil stuff. Um, all of these are locked for some reason. <laughs> all right. Um, oh, this is going to be cool. Okay. Well, that's a great place to start next time. Um, if this is the 3ds Max file, let's just see what happens if we try and open it. Um, uh, assets, do do do, and news bonds, and ugh, no, I know. Then show me what the options are. Fuck it. Let's do this. Uh, sponsor dot max. There we go. And let's see what happens when we go and try and run test 2 on it. Oh, well, yeah, we should actually kill... No, free. Free all asset things. And then run... No! Test 2. Freaking out, man! Right. Um... Oh, here we are again. Here's the same area that you got, Medellin. Um, Let me guess. I would say that it's that... Um... This did not work with that path. Like, we just... It did not like. Let's change it to op Obj and see what happens. Okay, null pointers here for... Okay, it's expecting a textures directory. And then... Huh. There's no slash there. Fine, so that seems like one of our simple cockups. So... Textures. That's kind of interesting. Ugh, okay. Um Oh fuck it, let's just Hackity hack format nil thing this let's just put a slash there and see what happens. Nope. Oh, I would have expected something slightly different though. This texture spawns up wait a second, actually let's look at um new spawns textures. Textures. No, it is. There's something really simple we're not doing here. Wait a second. There's something I'm fucking up. I'm just gonna. Wait a second. This is the. That's the path to that directory. So it's suggesting that this is the thing that has the has the issue. Let's do this. And let's format this. Let's just print this as well. Ugh. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Let's do it. I expect we're allocating tons of stuff. We're not freeing as well. So sooner or later, it's just going to crash. Okay, so it... Oh, right. Yeah, it's... um, Yay backslashes. That's not what we want at all. Okay, so that's why. Um, what's the quickest way to replace those? Um, oh, come on, guys. What's the... Uh, you guys probably know this. What's the quickest way to change this into... Is there a replace or something like that? Replace sequence one with sequence two. Okay, so we're gonna replace... Uh, oh no, that's that's sequence one in sequence two. Um, substitute. Substitute. Um, new, which is uh, for... Bam, like that. Okay, that'll do. 
Abort, abort. Hey, we're trying to hack something together here. Get out of our way. Um, so we can just merge all path names back to blah, 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 blah. Come on. Come on. Like this. Who knows? This might even work. Didn't like that TGA. Let's have a look. Is it is it the actual file? Cannot display image. Invalid image specification. Nil. Ooh, blimey. Okay. There does seem to be something a little a little on the funky side with that thing then. So let's go into news. Ah, wait a second. These are expecting it to be in the same directory. Um, so all of these are should actually be in new spawns. Um, like this. Come on. It'd be really cool if this worked last second. Chug, chug, chug. Oh, didn't like GI flag. Receive our pointer. Interesting. Um, where's GI flag? New spawns, GI underscore flag. Do you see GI underscore flag? Because assuming this is in order, we go from we go from C to L. That's uh Okay. Well, it looks like something's a little funky there. That's fine. It's not going to get done this time because we're running over time now. Let's uh, let's just call it a day. Um, I'm just going to catch up with uh, what's going on here, and then we will we will do a runner. So um, da -da 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 -da. we've got angry ranting about offices, Grr. and. Um, <laughs> on the pimp's giving away where he works. Um, oh, Johnny's saying Max is the application format, so it's unlike the asymptote will be able to open it. Thank you, sir. I'm sorry I didn't see your uh, your thing a few minutes ago. Um, yeah, it's such a quiff. They, it's really weird the um, priorities that people. I, it almost like the people in charge of this stuff, get a kick out of the offices more than the people that were they're apparently for. Um, yeah. Anyway. Um, <laughs> accidentally some words. Indeed. Right. Okay. Um, I think... I think we're going to have to call it a day there. So thank you so much for hanging out. Um, we went off on some detours today. Uh, we at least found out that the uh, model that we were using is not gonna not gonna do the job. Let's uh, let's finish at least the stream with that on screen. Um... Oh yeah, that's not gonna work, is it? Don't do it like that. Do it like this. Not like actually. That's new sponsor too. Sponsor dodge. Yeah, this is the old one. So. Chugga chugga chugga, it's going to reload it again. Yeah, so we got to this point where we realized that at least that the, the normals are all screwed because we had to use smooth normals. But we had to generate normals from the object and that was just terrible. Um, so we're not going to trust this object anymore. I mean, assume blaming the object, though it might just be me. And uh, we're going to go and use the one from Crytek. We're in the process of doing that, but it seems to be missing a texture that we kind of thing. But we'll, we'll we'll sort that out and next week we'll have something pretty up and running and we'll start um, we'll start playing around with that. So... Thank you so much. This has been great, and uh, I'll catch you next time. Thank you so much. Bye.